Hello, and welcome to Martin Syrup Bills Money. I am your host, Kyle Cardi, and joining me, as always, is the gaggle of criminals to my Hiram Lodge. Noah Carden. <laughs> Hello, Noah. Did you mean to say that initial title? <laughs> Martin Syrup Bills Money? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so... Thank you all for joining us on this, the most prestigious uh, podcast, multiple award-winning, very approachable podcast, mm-hmm. Maple Syrup, Blood Money, I mean, winner of I, the Webbies, three years running. I didn't think a podcast could win a Tony, but apparently we did. <laughs> I, they, they like when I sing the songs from Riverdale. They really do enjoy that. Tony's the musical one, right, now. Yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll, we'll cut that part. That way people won't know that I'm a Philistine. Okay. Um, yes, Tony Award winners. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us on the red carpet tonight. This beautiful glitz and glamour and, and everything that you've come to know with Riverdale. Oh, wait, what's that? Just kidding. It's a pile of who cares. Aww. Um, I'm glad it's over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I got. The there was one thing that like caught me this episode, and I was like, "Ooh, cool! This could actually be fun for season three. But after that, I was like, and even before that, I was like, "Actually, nah." Hmm. What did you think? Did you enjoy it? I I mean, it was okay. It was, All right, and it this was... has been Maple Syrup Blood Money. If you want to get us on Twitter, uh, yeah, no, I thought it was like an okay kind of like epilogue to the season. I mean, all yeah. things considered, it could have been a lot worse. That is a hell of fair. Um, so yeah, uh, we're talking about Chapter Thirty Five, Brave New World, the season two finale, the sort of epilogue because all the. Real Wouldn't big. Brave New World be a better title for the first episode of third season? Yeah, I mean, I can kind of see what they're going for, but at the same time, like... Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, it just seems like a missed opportunity, considering how it ends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so the gang plays a dangerous game this week, and they do lots of lots of stuff... That uh-huh. we've seen before. Uh huh. And everything that you expect to happen does happen. And and nothing surprises me on this show. Okay. Oh. This has been Maple Syrup Blood Money. <laughs> if you want to follow us on just, Twitter, just keep doing that joke. <laughs> Every um, five well, minutes. Let it never be said that I'm not consistent. Okay. Um,. What do you uh, want to talk about first, my dude? Uh, you want to talk about Jughead first? Uh, yeah, his is the most like. Oh yeah, I've seen this before. Uh huh. So, so Jughead's dead in the beginning of the episode. They're uh-huh. at his grave. Jughead uh-huh. died, by the way, guys. That was a goof. That was a goof. He's, he's fucking dead. Yep. <laughs> he's actually dead. This is its entire plot line. Betty, like, cries over his tombstone, and and that's it. And that's the episode. Thank you for listening to Maple Syrup Blood. Hey, don't steal my fucking bad bit. <laughs> um, so, turns out that someone cast a very potent illusion on Jughead mm-hmm, after beating mm-hmm. him to death, which made him think he was dead, but then he did roll to disbelieve and he did succeed and he did wake up in a hospital with papa sleeping ish nearby yes yeah so jackhead's not dead he's really beat up and then he gets up and walking around like the rest of the episode like it's nothing so yeah he's durable i mean he was beaten so badly that everybody thought he was dead he wasn't breathing when we left him, uh-huh. said Polly Pocket, which uh-huh. is like, okay, I mean, I guess he's fine. You guys did a bad a bad job. A rock to the head would have uh-huh. just, like, you yeah, would have done know. it. 
There's easier ways to kill somebody. Yeah. We, we've you guys gone on and about, and like, you know, making sure you finish the job. Yeah, I mean, no one, none of y'all listeners were like, oh my god, they're actually gonna kill Jughead. He's actually dead, right? Like, none of y'all. Yeah. The, the stakes there didn't actually matter, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, so then Papa catches Juggy up on... Um, like a Game of Thrones style recap of a battle that happens off screen, uh-huh, which is yes. like the most Game of Thrones <laughs> shit on the planet. Especially early Game of Thrones. Like later Game of Thrones <laughs> actually do kind of, once they have the money, they can do the battles. But yeah, once they got that sweet, sweet cheddar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, apparently all serpents the serpents lost. are like, they're like disbanded. They lost. Um, can we talk about this very briefly? Because like, at no point in the entire run of the the series have I th- like been like, oh yeah, the ghoulies are a a populous threat. Like, there's a lot of them. Like, they always kind of seemed like there were like twenty of them, uh-huh. and that they all went to prison. Yeah, I like, and how then did they all... all got released at the same time somehow. Like, I have many logistical questions about the ghoulies, but they are narratively powerful. Mm-hmm. Yes, apparently Only, they're they're just like everyone's intelligence. They're they're ruthless. They have that extra edge that the serpents don't. Apparently, yeah. Except they didn't bring guns. No, they didn't. So I guess they're not that fucking ruthless. It's America. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Whatever. Like Riverdale doesn't know what it wants to be mm-hmm. and it's super apparent like does it want to actually embrace this like more dark stuff or does it just want to keep it lighthearted? you can't do both because boy howdy they're trying to do both with these super boring crime plot lines and nothing they do is interesting because it's just so like oh okay this is irrelevant and inconsistent mm-hmm. and boring yeah just like Make it super goofy or don't. Or make it super serious. Like, you can't... You gotta pick one in situations like this. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so, that... Uh, what else does Jughead even do? He's sick for a while. Yeah, I he's, guess. you know... He's, he's there. He's not really super important until, like, the final scene with, like died yeah well him and his dad argue about um running away to toledo to be with his mom and stuff and he's hey, like no nah, no nah, dog i'm not gonna spoil- do that spoiler alert um they're not gonna write off one of the most popular characters on the show yeah. so that scene has no dramatic weight yeah um and then uh Cheryl comes along and alerts Jughead that, hey, the serpents didn't run away. A bunch of them are chilling the white worm, which uh, the lodges are trying to buy to kind of finish off the whole buying of the South Side deal. Which then uh, Jughead gets Archie to help them like do a, like, a refugee run to the North Side. Yeah, like... It, it just... So much of like the... the the drama this mm-hmm. week felt so foot in mouth where it's just like, look at how dramatically lit everything is. Mm-hmm. And the stakes have never been higher. It's like, no, nah, actually it's not because I, I don't care what happens to the serpents, you yeah. know, like if the serpents were at all interesting, or anything I would be interested but they haven't been they've been arguably one of the worst things that you've done for the show yeah and like there's only a few key serpent characters that like we really care about and like the rest of them are yeah it's it's Tony and and, I mean technically Jughead and FP but whatever other than that yeah like and the thing with the serpents is that they're like they just don't act so like they have this like gang code mm-hmm. which is fine if the gang code was consistent but like now they're just like yeah sure y- you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend they can join the gang sure ride or die except i guess not lol 
Yeah. It just fuck. It's I just want it to be interesting. Riverdale, please. Yeah. Um so the let's see. FP steps down as the head of the serpents. Jughead is then made the new King Serpent. Uh, Cheryl is brought in as a serpent, apparently. She gets a special red jacket because, she's, of course, she does. She's Cheryl Bombshell. She doesn't have... <laughs> what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> she's Cheryl Bombshell. No, I'm cutting this part. <laughs> this isn't... Th- you know what? <laughs> I'm done with Riverdale. You fucking pushed me there, <laughs> Noah. God damn it. You've done this. Um, yeah, so Cheryl Bombshell joins the Serpents with a, like, lipstick fire engine red mm-hmm. uh, jacket. Even though they did compliment how nice the black one looked on her, and, like, mm-hmm. the black one is objectively better than yeah. the red one because just, like, it's so much easier to coordinate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, just, I don't know. I just take issue with it from, like, a fashion standpoint, and I'm not even a fashion boy. Um, it's a very nice jacket, whereas it looks like Jughead's was, like, pre-weathered. Yeah. And everyone else's is garbage. She got she got a bespoke red She got a, a brand, brand new one. Jughead's does, was, a, do, was a hand-me-down, apparently. Does the red leather come from, like, red cows? And do those red cows make strawberry milk? Yes. Kyle, that's exactly how it works. I'm glad you you finally learned. Thank you. I've been going to school for... I forgot what the study of animals was. Um, Animology. (laughs) Animology. So Jughead becomes King Snake, Uh whatever. Um, He and Betty hook up at a hotel because Betty... Well, Betty didn't really do much this week either, huh? She was just kind of mad. She's mad at her dad, and then she goes and she talks to her dad... Who is and now Hannibal Lecter? Yeah, I, the there are three discrete scenes that I'm just like, these are 15 and 16 year old children. Like, uh-huh. they aren't menacing. They they <gasps> are baby faced nobodies. Well, okay. So we want to just jump over to uh, Betty's plot. No, I mean that. I think we just did it, my dude. Like okay. people, people are looking at the house. Her mom is upset. Polly's around because she needs to be evil in the last couple minutes. Yeah, Polly and, is and like, a, a secret witch trying oh to. Oh my god! Trying to seduce that's, her mother into the coven that is the farm. That's like the only thing that I'm remotely interested in, and like the evil league of evil. That's it. But I. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? Um. Betty goes to see Hal, and she's like, no more darkness, no more evil. (laughs) And he's like, I'll always be a part of you. And then she walks out, and then she and Juggy bone down. And that's it. Like, that's it. There is a good scene, and by good, I mean scene with um, where she talks to Fred Andrews. And she does say that, like, she's so, like, mad at herself and stuff like that. And how she's supposed to be this great detective and stuff like that. And I'm like, Betty! You're 15! You're 15! Well, we do also have to remember to to compare this to Betty previously, who's like, I killed uh, the sugar man, and I killed the Uh so-and-so, and I'm gonna kill you. It's like, Betty does actually think she's hot shit, Mm -hmm. so that level of, like, cringe is actually kind of on character for her. Yes. Yes, it is. Very (laughs) self-serious. They have no self-awareness, these children. They are 15. I mean, that is fair. Did you have a Chunbyo phase when you were younger, Noah? Oh, probably. Yeah, me too. I'm 30 now, so that's a long time ago. <gasps> yeah, that's why we're late, by the way. In addition to my my moving, which has become even more frustrating because of the current tenants of the place I'm moving to, um, Noah had a big old big boy birthday, and now he's a 30 flirty and wise. Yep, I'm, I'm old. I'm turning to dust as we speak. <laughs> as we, there was something about that delivery that just tickled me. Um... Um, but I mean, that's, really, that's it for Betty. Is there anything else it. you can think of? Um, 
Because I no, got I mean the whole thing with her dad is like she keeps being told to like forgive her dad, and she's like, nah, not gonna do that. I'm just gonna be kind of mad at him. That's the dumbest shit. Like Polly's like, if if we don't forgive dad then will be what he was and i'm like a murderer what are you talking about i mean like you can hate someone and like move on with your life and not be consumed with hate yeah like part of hatred is like not thinking about someone Mm -hmm. obsession Mm -hmm. is different whatever polly polly's evil by the way she's indoctrinated by some like Arch Fay at this place called the farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She ate the food, and now she she's ate, one of them. She crossed into the farm, and she did drink a beverage that was offered to her. Yes. Uh, and then at the end of the the Cooper plot line, Mom Cooper is like crying, and Betty's like, "You should meet someone. He has a way with words, and like he's a warlock. Cryptic. He definitely a warlock or an extra planar creature. Yes." Probably uh, has a deer head. More than likely. Some sort of animal token. Mm-hmm. Gotta have that motif. Yes. Uh, um, Veronica? Yeah, we can hit Ronnie. Okay. Well, let's not do that. Let's talk about not, Ronnie. We're not gonna strike Ronnie. I mean, like, hit up. Yeah. You big butt. 30-year-olds <laughs> don't know how to take jokes. They don't nope. have humor genes. I'm they a humorless fuck now. <laughs> Your humor gene turned to dust. Yes, that's the first thing to go. Yup. Uh, so Veronica is like, I gotta stop my dad from buying up the town. So I'm gonna get uh, the former mayor, now attorney, to make him give me my money. And then a Rihanna song plays. And Bitch better have my money. And um, they do get the money. They do get the money because she threatens him with all the blackmail that she has. And then instead of buying... Well, no, she does buy the White Worm, which blocks Hiram Lodge, but then she trades the White Worm for Pops' diner and then turns the basement of the diner that used to be a speakeasy back into a speakeasy, which is plot convenient. Yeah, like, that's been there all along. Don't worry about it. Also, um, Veronica is a bad negotiator. Uh Like... She has all the fucking power when she's talking to Hiram. And she's just like, okay, Hiram, you set the terms. Mm-hmm. It, uh. Now, Veronica could do all of this and then still rat him anyway. Like, I don't. She has enough evidence, I would assume, that like it's an open and maybe. shut case. I mean, that that's the whole plot of season three. It's going to be, you know, plucky teens take down professional mobster. Mm-hmm. And his, his League of Evil. <sighs> yeah. I just... I said it before. I don't give a shit about criminal storylines, especially mob storylines. Mm. And, like, I might have said it way earlier where I was like, if Hiram Lodge isn't resolved by the end of season two, I don't care anymore. And I could not give less of a shit about season three because it's going to focus on Hiram Lodge's like criminal dealings. And that just means a bunch of inconsistent teenagers are going to like take him down. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Archie isn't going to stay in jail. Like none of the stakes matter None yeah. of it's realistic. And not even realistic. None of it's, like, there's, dramatic. There's, there's no verisimilitude, like... Yes, yes. Oh, big fancy 30-year-old words. I know. <laughs> Damn. That's, that's what happens. They give you... They take out your humor gene, and they put in your thesaurus gene. Call me a dirty millennial, please. You dirty millennial. Oh, my God. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, please don't make that noise ever again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I promise nothing. Um, also, so she gets Pop's bar. She turns into a speakeasy. Um, they murder Tallboy off screen. They do murder Tallboy off screen uh, to like wrap up the second Black Hood, which means then, no more, no more Piccolo. Oh, rip, rip in pieces. No more, Piccolo no more Boy. Dinobot. Um, 
Unless they bring and him then, back like Dinobot. They bring the tall boy metal. Oh my god. Could you imagine <laughs> if, if tall boy came back as like a velociraptor chimera? <laughs> Yo, I take it back. If Riverdale leaks chimeras, I'm back for season three, y'all. Like Brother. What? Oh, I was making a full milk alchemist Bro. joke. Oh don't don't fucking brother me, you goofball. <laughs> you were like cracking up, I barely heard it. Um so listen. Um What were we talking that- about? We were talking about the Veronica plotline, and spoiler alert, here's, here's the end of the Archie plotline. Uh, Archie goes in and threatens Hiram Lodge with a knife, and uh-huh. then doesn't kill Hiram Lodge. He, ma- he makes a very serious, like, threatening thing, and then sticks a knife in the ground, or the table, so that we get a nice uh, audio clip for the teaser for this episode. Yeah. Uh, and, then he, and then he gets arrested. Uh, after because- winning the student council president. Yeah, he yep. gets arrested in front of the whole school because, of course, you did, you fucking idiot. You were you were an accessory to several murders, and the police is corrupt. Yes, the police is now in the pocket of Hiram Lodge. Poli- police is corrupt, Noah. Uh huh. And just like, of course, you got gotten, you dipshit. Especially you when challenged- you when. <laughs> When you reminded Hiram of that guy that Andre murdered out in the woods, like... And he was like, oh, yeah, I kill so many people that I almost... I plumb forgot. Like, this is the only thing in season two that has been what I would describe as an appropriate call and response. Archie makes a dumb call, and Hiram Lodge responds in a way that makes sense. Yes, by as arresting only- a teenager. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'll harp on it because I know it's not going to matter. But, like, also at the same time, at least it makes sense within the laws of the universe we've constructed. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, Mayor McCoy is going to get him off scot-free. I'm not worried. Yeah, that's that's. There's totally only one unhappy. lawyer in town. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's the only, like, important lawyer. Wait, no, there was, there was Hiram's attorney. He's that, evil. Well, that's true. This is true. But yes. I forgot what his name was also, because he only showed up in two episodes. Weaselman. It was uh, Henry Weaselman. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, attorney um, at crime. Um, <laughs> shut up. Uh, let's see. That's about it. Other than Hiram apparently now has his own League of Evil. Where... It consists of a drug dealing Blossom Brother. Whatever. I mean, I guess we... Why even fucking kill the first one if we're just going to retread that plot line? Ah, huh? uh, God, I don't, I don't. What's the fucking point? Yeah. Um, so they can Blossom? make the, 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 they can make the pun about a cliffhanger. Um. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, that is probably actually the reason. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we have Claudius. He's taking over the, the jingle jangle importing. Um, Brothel Blossom. We got Polly, who is the, yes, Madame Blossom. Madame. Uh, um, we Penny. got uh, the skinless snake. Yes, Penny. Uh, Good. I'm glad. We have. Um, uh, what do you. Okay. So, what? What, what, how do you feel about Penny? Like, overall? Honestly, I feel like she's the only villain that I'm interested in. Like, she's okay. sort of menacing, and like, she's made some mistakes, but also at the same time, I feel like she's one of the only antagonists that like, when she is on screen, I'm actually interested in what's happening. Yeah, she's, she's, she's fucked up, but she's also like ruthless enough that like, and it she's kind of makes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like she's the only villain who I'm like, Oh, she's actually kind of smart. Mm-hmm. Like I want to know what she's up to because I don't, care what Hiram Lodge is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Penny. I'd give Penny a solid, like, 7 or 8 out of 10. Okay. Um, um, there's there the... is Grabbed by the Ghoulies. Yes, there's Head Ghoulie. Uh, and then there's uh, Sheriff Mineta. Um, um, hmm. And that's it. We can call him Dirty Harry. <laughs> okay. Dirty Harry was a cop movie, wasn't it? Yes. Also, he wasn't a dirty cop. He was just... Anyway. Don't correct me, you... (laughs) Noah. Don't you ever fucking correct me on this podcast ever again. 
I, I, I make zero promises. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I got, I got no good funny cop name because they said his name a thousand times, so I do know that his name is Sheriff Manetta. Um, and also because he... Oh! He's the... He's the kid from uh, Boku no Hero. He's the greatest. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was thinking the same thing the as you were about to say it. I was like, oh, <laughs> he's that weird, that, creepy one. Yeah, he's the one who shouldn't be on in Boku no Hero at all <laughs> because he's the fucking worst. I literally know like next to nothing about him other than he's a creepy weirdo. Oh, he's the absolute goddamn pits. Everyone, every, everyone in the Boku fandom hates him. Yes. Um, and the people who say, oh, he's not that bad, are reviled within the fandom. Yeah. Um, so, and then uh, Honcho Hiram, he's like, we're going to do evil. And they're all like, yes, excellent. And they all like menacingly yeah. riddle their fingers. Um, Archibald? Uh, we already talked about Archie. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Who are we missing? Uh, no, we didn't talk about Archie. We only touched on a little bit of what he does. Okay. Ar- Ar- Archie's dad loses the election. Uh-huh. Ar- Archie helps the serpents. Uh-huh. Archie gets elected president. Archie uh-huh. goes to jail. Done. Yeah, yeah. We said most of that. Um, yeah, we said it in other people's recaps. So that's uh, Archie's sh- whole beef. Um, Kevin and Moose hook up, which is kind of creepy we, because it's like... We know why they killed Midge. Yeah, we know why they <laughs> killed Midge now. Uh, cool, cool decision, writers. That doesn't feel forced at all. Yeah. So Moose it's and almost Kevin, as if exploring a polyamorous relationship or an affair would have been too difficult to try. Yeah, and especially like that whole scene comes off as like super creepy, like real, real quick, hella inappropriate. Like, like I feel Moose like Moose is emotionally vulnerable right now, Kevin. I, you should not. I feel like they should have at least split that scene into like two parts. Like, have a scene 100%. where, like, Moose is crying about losing all of Midge's stuff and, like, all the notes that people left for her after she died. And then, like, him trying to kiss Kevin and Kevin's like, no, no, no. And then coming back to it later and bit Kevin being like, if you're ready to do this, so am I kind of thing. But. Yeah. I, honestly, I would have preferred to just remove the romantic equation out of it. Like. Yeah. Moose tries to do the smooch, and Kevin's like, no. And then scene two is Kevin reapproaching Moose, and he's like, listen, I want to be here for you, but I, I'm not going to let it become romantic or sexual. Like, I'm just going to be a good friend to my friend who is hurting from their horrific loss. Okay, yeah, definitely. I, 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 it's just like... Ugh, it it just feels gross and exploitative and hey. like manipulative of a person whose girlfriend just got murdered. Hey Kyle, yo, what's Gucci? Ruru and Joaquin back came back for literally five seconds in a scene. <laughs> <laughs> remember when that happened? Hey, remember remember how they don't know how to write gay relationships on this show? Because I do. <laughs> They literally put Joaquin in for like five seconds, a scene like two episodes ago, and then completely forgot he was here. Like that could have been like some drama, like some drama between. It like, could have Joaquin. been anything. Yeah. Oh man. What a <laughs> disaster. And Fangs is still alive, so there's still that kind of like spark between him and Kevin. No, Fangs fucking died. No, he's back. He's at the like they say that Fangs. Was totally alive. He was li- uh, um, FP was oh, lied to by a deputy. I thought they said that he didn't make it last week. No, they said he did, but at the beginning of the episode, they totally say that turns out Fangs is alive. One of the sheriff deputies lied to us so that we would get all riled up and go Oh, the fight. beginning of... I missed that because they did hit a man's tummy and he did wince. And I did say, wait a second, isn't that Fangs Fogarty? Yes. Boy, howdy. That's some shitty writing that I just completely blocked out of my mind. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Fangs is how totally irrelevant alive. are your fucking stakes? <gasps> oh, man. Oh, my God. That's egregious. Like, I feel like if if Midge died, they should at least kill off Fangs. Like, nothing against his actor or whatever, but... Like, they murdered... They <laughs> murdered 
Midge for nothing. <laughs> Midge was introduced this season. She was born to die. Midge's actress. I'm sorry. On behalf of everybody, I am sorry because God oh, damn it. God. They just crumpled you up and threw you out like yesterday's newspaper. Oh, man. That's fucked up, man. So, yeah. So, Kevin has, like, his choice. He's got a bunch of piping hot dick on all (laughs) sides. Three beautiful knobs. And they murdered Mitch. (laughs) (laughs) They're not going to give us... I mean, like, let's be fucking real here. They're not going to give us a harem... For Kevin. No. There is no way that the CW will actually do anything interesting with their gay boy Kevin. There is no reality where they'll have the fucking guts to do that. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so mad now, Noah. I... I... I, uh, maybe I was just like, oh, maybe it's not Fangs. Or maybe it's a ghost. No, no, no. Fangs is totally no. alive. Um, and also, I guess he got back to school in three days after getting gut shot. I mean, if if <laughs> Fangs can get gut shot and then, you know. Dude, the Sweetwater River is magic. It's it's It's, it's magic. It's heal- yes. It's imbibed. It's, you imbibe the water and it heals you real quick. But if you submerge yourself in it, you, you get You get haunted. dragged right it's, under. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's spirit water. That's why. That's that why it, Jason's ghost is in the water. Yeah, it has to take life to give life. Yes, exactly. Jughead um, and Fangs were revived by the power of Jason Blossom. Man, I miss Jason Blossom's ghost. I do too. That was the most compelling shit back when you know what made riverdale season one so great noah because we've Ghosts. covered the whole fucking episode yeah like the mysticism in the air i like, i really do think that part of this reason part of the reason this season kind of suffered is the fact kind of. that well yes uh <clears throat> is the fact that they kind of had to do the split between riverdale and sabrina once they kind of settled on how sabrina was going to show up on netflix and they At least really... Sabrina's gonna have magic, but like, so here's my here's my hesitation with Sabrina. Sabrina's gonna be magic, but that magic is gonna be overt. So there's not really a mystery to that kind of magic. Like Sabrina is gonna be very much about like plot convenient magical solutions and magical complications. Yeah, I like my shit mystic. I like it to be unapproachable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to guess, but then I also want consistency when it finally comes out. But like Sabrina's shit is going to be super spelled out and it's going to be, it, I don't know. I'm, I want to watch it. I don't want to bad mouth it yet, but like <sighs> season one was so good because it's like, is it magic? I don't yeah. know. There, that's, there's, what, that's what hooked me. There's some weird kind of supernatural stuff going on in the background that like, you know, even if it's not out and out, there's definitely something, like you said, mystical about the whole thing that kind of adds an air to the show. That is, And it also had a lot more fog. Yeah! Like, the one there... thing about season two is that, in my opinion, it completely lost its environment and, like, the way it felt. Both it... of those things, I think, were super important to setting the tone, and they're both absent. I, I just, I feel like... Around that halfway point, it really dropped off, and like we lost a lot of the the mist and fog. Because mm-hmm. um, I remember there was that one scene where it's like all the all the like the core cast and like a couple of like like Reggie and stuff in like one household, and the house is just full of fog. Yeah, was that the party episode? The good mm-hmm. party, not the bad party. Uh, the party mm-hmm. where Archie's girlfriend broke up with him. No, I think it was just like an episode where they talk about something. Because I remember the sheriff being there. I think it was a, they were talking about the um, the red circle. Oh man, remember the red circle, Kyle? Uh, ages ago, feels like an eternity ago. God, the red the, circle would have been awesome. The the shirtless boy army. 
And and the what is it? The dark circle. Then they had the uh, dark circle, which was the Lin Kuei. But, well, what I'm saying here is like. I loved the red circle because of the goofiness that it could have been. Uh-huh. But they did to the red circle what they did to the dark circle, what they've done to every boy gang in this show, uh-huh. which is they are around for an episode, maybe two, and then they're just never spoken of again. Yeah. The dark circle actually lasted a little bit longer because, like, it showed up for, like, two episodes, then it was away for, like, three, and then it showed back up in, like, two more episodes under, like, Reggie's control. And then yeah. it was immediately but like gotten rid of again. It's it's oh. just gone. It's just gone already. And also now everyone on the north and south side are best friends forever because of a uh, shooting. Because all of the pancakes and eggs that Mister Andrews made for him in his house. And yeah, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, fuck it, whatever. Um, Bardic inspiration. Uh, uh-huh. Performance, food. Performance, culinary. Um, yes. Would, could you have? Mm. We're going into our most unapproachable section. Would carpentry and construction be considered a a bardic like focus? Oh shit! Oh my god! So a uh, hey everybody, prepare to prepare to be super bored for a minute. Um, so I. I would say yes, and I think that a bad game master would say no, because just think of the, like, possibilities of, like, bardic magic infused into architectural art. Mmm. Like, a brutalist bard, or, like, a (laughs) nouveau riche bard, like, the fucking... Oh my god, I haven't realized how magical, like, you could make stuff in a fantasy world if it's constructed by a bard as a performance. Yeah, yeah, totally. Fuck and I mean, me, Noah! Fred totally said it. He was, like, in a band when he was younger, and then he just Fred's turned a bard. that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, Noah! Fred's a bard, Cheryl's a, a ranger paladin... Um, she is, I think she might just be a full-on slayer or something at this point, yes. like an inquisitor. A, a huntress. Um, yes, a divine arrow. Um, um, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, so like, the thing about magic that gets me the most horny, that like, I don't see a lot of people consider in magic systems, is like, the daily application of magic. And like, don't don't be weird like listeners but like if a world doesn't have like a magic system where female spellcasters the first shit that they fucking learn to do or create is like a spell that prevents like menstrual pain when it's cast or just like shuts that shit down altogether then the magic system of the world makes no fucking sense to me because like the day-to-day applications of magic are way more interesting than casting a fucking fireball. Like, what are the magical implications of farming magic, of, like, birth control magic, of architectural magic? Like, more than just, like, oh, I strum my lyre of construction and we build the building faster. But no, I'm talking about, like, how is the foundation of this fucking building modified Based on, like, rituals performed during its creation and, like, bardic performances. This shit gets me so fucking wild, Noah. And I can tell. I'm so hot for this idea right now. You have no idea. Well, now I've given you some inspiration for your... Clearly. Whatever. Yes. I've given Clearly you I've bardic defe- inspiration. But, like, so I've tried to do this before. I tried to do, like, a farming magic system mm. for, for like, a D20. Um, and, like... No one else finds it interesting because it's like, well, what are these spells going to do for me? Like, I'd rather just cast Lightning Bolt. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. But damn it, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so hot for this, Noah. Fuck. I'm <laughs> sorry I totally co-opted your amazing point, but like, you got <laughs> no, it's me fun. jazzed. It's fine. I'm glad it could be helpful. Oh my god. Okay, enough. Enough about this. Fred what happened is to Dilton Doily? <laughs> Fucking dead. <laughs> I 
like for a minute I was gonna be like, how tight would it be if Dilton Doily was in the evil army of evil? <laughs> he was in the red circle initially. He was the cameraman. He was the And then fluffer. he stabbed himself in the leg. <laughs> Remember when that happened? I you forgot. Remember? Oh, Remember when we thought Dilton Doily was the second shooter? I still think he could be the second shooter. Well, with how frequently this fucking series, like, just decides to undo things or rehash the same plots, I'm, I guess maybe it's possible. I mean, if he's not, he definitely sold Tallboy that gun. <laughs> he's an arms dealer. He is! That's where he got the... That's who Archie I, got his pistol from. No, I know. It's just like... How is he getting the guns, Namin? Like, uh, I don't know. That shit is a process. Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. Um, all right. So how would you rate Riverdale Season 2? Uh, what, what met- and also say what metric you're using. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to rate Season 2. Hmm. Oh, man. Yeah? Out of ten. Okay. A pretty milk toast. Uh Uh-huh. Out of ten. I'm going to rate it five. Okay, okay. (laughs) Half-naked red circle boys. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So it's worth a a, uh, pentagon of shirtless boys. Yes. I I would say that, like... Oh man, I would definitely yeah. say if if you haven't watched it like all the way through, like with us, or now that it's out on Netflix or something like that, maybe like is it on Netflix already? It came out Netflix yesterday. Holy shit! Um, Why did I watch it on the goddamn CW app with commercials? Because they only put the entire season out on the the week after the final episode of the I season. I know. Ended. I'm saying I watched it today. <laughs> all of it. The whole show. Uh-huh. I've been sending these back in time. By the way, we are those people from the future. <laughs> we figured it out, y'all. I would rate it two and a half time traveling WB execs out of five. <laughs> <laughs> two time traveling milk faced nobodies out of five. Yes, uh, but um, no, like I would, I would probably like. Yeah, yeah. I would like fast forward through bits. I think I would suggest that, like, you know, find some episodes that people suggest to you and just kind of, like, string it all together. Maybe, That's fair. Maybe somebody can make, like, a uh, a super cut. Like, like a machete order? A Riverdale Kai, if you will. Oh, my God. That, I, oh, fuck. There probably is something you could make this into, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm willing to bet that if if, like... A competent storyteller jumped in who was also an editor. They could probably piece together a pretty good half season. Mm-hmm. Um, so my metric is not numeral based. It is just it is just like a recommendation. Um, so on a scale of hard pass to must watch, I would call this one. Eh, nah. That's my metric. Okay. You can you can skip it. You don't have to watch it. I would say I would say Riverdale season one. Definitely watch. That is a absolute must watch because it is goddamn delightful. Uh huh. Season two, I am gonna give a soft pass. It's pretty low for me. I really did not enjoy it. As a complete piece of work, there are moments that had me going buck wild, like the red circle and like the sugar man picture sliding into frame. But mm-hmm. overall, boy howdy, it was disappointing. <sighs> I hope Sabrina's good. Yeah, totally. So do I. I, I don't know if I can do season three of Riverdale. Okay, so let's talk about season three real quick. Um, yeah. Roberto, my man, has has gone on record saying that season three, um, as of right now, 
Uh, do you remember the episode uh, Tales from the Dark Side? That's the one with the Lovecraft crate, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but it's basically like the episode is more consistently split into like here's a plot for these characters, here's a plot for these characters, and they very rarely like interact. Oh, uh, it's going to be more like that? They're saying that more episodes are going to be like that for season three. So. I mean, from an editing standpoint, I guess it makes the format that we do easier because, mm-hmm. like, it's just – it's not broken up. It's just, like, a sequential viewing of one character's story. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I like that, but I don't think I dislike it either. It's something yeah. fresh and new that you don't really see a lot of in television, so I don't want to poo-poo it until I, I like, see one or two of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, um, I'm probably gonna watch the first couple episodes of season three, but like, yeah, let's. I don't. Um, I don't know if I can do a full season of this again because okay. like, I don't. I don't feel like I'm providing good content to listeners when I'm yeah. so actively against it. Like I've never enjoyed the angry, like video game nerd style, like dunking on something. You know? No. Yeah, that's that's understandable. I definitely think let's. I mean, we'll talk about. Sabrina, when that comes out. Oh, for sure. I mean, um, and also this might change. Like, yeah, I might, I might come back fresh and baby faced, yeah, like a we've Domino's got, hot and ready pizza and ready to dance. We've got but time. We've got time. season two sucked the life out of me. Yeah, I, I think part of it is just the fact that it was so long. Honestly, is it a full order for season three? Uh, I want to say so. I think it's going to be another. Ugh. Yeah, which I just, I don't know. I just don't think. If they had broken it up into two discrete blocks, yeah, 12 episodes or 11 episodes, however many episodes of The Black Hood, and then 11 episodes of Hiram Lodge, it would have basically been seasons two and three. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, just, I know. I, just I, let the pre... Do what a good anime does. Leave the previous arcs to die. Once they're over, bring them back very infrequently and just let them be. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I definitely think it should be, like, just take more cues from, like, you know, the 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 cable television series, you know, where it's, like, five or six seasons of, like, really kind of short, you know, 10 to 12 episode seasons, and just kind yeah. of keep it very tight. Don't, you don't have to go all out. And I mean... Yeah, man, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is masterful with that. The first season sucked and was boring but it it might have been my favorite show on television because just like it's it's fun and i enjoy it and they're always willing to try new stuff yeah and i want Uh ghosts in riverdale yeah so we'll we'll discuss how exactly we're going to do sabrina um i don't know if we because since it's going to be a 10 episode season that comes out all at once i don't know if we want to do like an episode by episode thing again or do you just do like blocks of episodes or 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 what I um, fuck. I don't even know. Yeah, we'll we'll discuss that once that kind of actually gets like a solid release date, other than October. Yeah. We um, might even do it a couple of different ways because I have been entertaining the notion of like viewing party, where it's like okay, I haven't yeah. really pitched it to Noah, but like we hop on the Discord together, we turn the recorders on, and then we just watch the show and like live react with each other. Yeah, I'd I'd totally be down for that. Um, I'd like to give that a whirl for at least an episode or two, you know? And then I think for season three of Riverdale, like you said, let's... uh, Let's see. Let's get a couple episodes in. Um, We can kind of discuss how we're feeling after, like, maybe three or four episodes on an episode of of Maple Syrup Blood Money and then kind of let our lovely listeners know if we're going to continue on or not. Yeah. Um, I'm... I mean, maybe we could even just do it in, like, we watch three episodes of Maple Syrup, no, of Riverdale, and then we talk about those three episodes, like, all together, because, like, Uh that's sort of been the rhythm of season two, was, like, each mini arc was three episodes long, and then it would move on to whatever the next mini arc was. Yeah, I don't know. that's right. I just want the Lovecraft box. That's all I want. Um, But, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, I just don't, you know, I don't want to do a thing that if it's not fun you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah totally um so 
that's all I got, my dude. Um, I think season two was forgettable. You think it was a, a five, which I assume is an average, and yeah, not it's, like a, it's, a video it, game five. Yeah, no, it was mediocre. It had some really cool parts. It had some really bad parts. So it had some great parts. My some, favorite was the insensity, insensitivity of Cheryl Blossom making out with Tony Topaz in front of a whole room of uh, exploited and, like, conversion <laughs> therapied, uh, like, queer uh, kids, and then just leaving them there to rot. Yep. I mean... That was next level. Yeah. <laughs> Looks real good there. <laughs> it's a great look, y'all. Um, oh, my phone is ringing. Oh, God. Okay, so... For <laughs> um, hold on. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. You talk. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, you can get at us, fine, fine listeners, by um, tweeting us at Maple and Blood. That's M A P L E A N D B L O O D. Um, you can email us. Uh, that's uh, maple, maple and Blood at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Maple and Blood. Uh, we've also got a couple different websites. Uh, we have uh, mapleandblood.podbean.com, which is where we host all this stuff. Uh, then we have uh, maple, mapleandblood.wordpress.com and mapleandblood.tumblr.com. Uh, so you can go check those out. Uh, the best place to get asked, though, is definitely the Twitter and the email. Um, yeah, we see those first for sure. Yeah, definitely. So uh, It was uh, someone who thought I called them. Okay, well, good to know. Um, if you want to get at me in particular, uh, at Best Pal Brigade, um, if you don't follow me, please follow me. Twitter's hard. No. Um, Facebook.com slash BPP Games, uh, Twitch.tv slash Best Pal Brigade. Um, yeah, that's that's what I got. Uh, Patreon.com slash Kyle Cardi, if you want to like support me as I go about building a, a system for like bardic construction performance should do that and then should stat out all the core archie characters uh i'll do them in savage worlds i'll do them in fate maybe because mm, mm, mm. fate seems easiest for these fucking blockheads <laughs> they all have trait inconsistency this is true uh you can find me um i'm common otaku on twitter that's k-a-m-e-n-o-t-a-k-u uh, you can also listen to the other shows I'm on. Uh, I'm on the Role Playing Exchange, which is a tabletop role playing and discussion podcast. I guest on the Technical Difficulties Gaming podcast every now and then, um, and then I've been in a couple like actual plays and stuff like that on Role Playing Public Radio. Um, I actually ran a game for them last weekend, which was really cool. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, it. Um, so one other thing, uh, uh, oh, if everybody could go and take a look at a certain Kickstarter that's going on right now, ah, uh, yes, our friends from the mix six and RPPR are running a, um, Kickstarter for a new game, a new board game called party foul. That's uh party F O W L because it's all about, Ducks, ducks getting ducks getting drunk so um go um, check that out having played it uh -huh. um i was lucky enough to uh like help the project uh earlier in the beginning and uh do some of the play tests at metatopia with it mm -hmm. um it is fun as shit yeah like, no it's it's, a it's ton legitimately of fun. something really really enjoyable i actually have purchased it with my own hard-earned currency yes yes i've totally backed it as well it's a really really fun game i got to play it back in march uh while they were getting everything squared away for this kickstarter um so yeah uh please 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 go check it out um to get Definitely. the the box version of the game is only 30 dollars, and if they hit certain stretch goals and stuff like that um where you get extra cards and things it's all going to be packaged into that one box like you don't have to pay yeah. anything extra for like stretch goals or anything like that um and, and uh, the art is by the lovely casey green yes who, and if if you don't 
if you don't back it, hey, you're a real duckhead. <laughs> uh, and Casey Green, just for anybody who doesn't know, he makes all of your favorite internet memes. So yeah, that's this fair. is this is fine, dog. Uh, dick dick butt. butt. All of them, all of them classic internet memes. That good shit. Uh, he is the guy behind all of that, along with several very good web comics. Um, and he's doing a, yeah. a bang up job with this art for this game. So like, go go check it out. Go back it. Um, uh, it would mean a lot to them. It would mean a lot to us if you went in and checked it out. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Um, but all right. That so means- I guess I'll take us out then, huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. I I. I had one, I forgot it already. You can take us out. Okay, so for maple syrup blood money, I am your blossom child hiding in a barrel, Noah Garden. And I am your ghost host, Jason Cardi. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for listening.